Hi all, um, here we are at Wine Searcher um, on a Friday for a Friday tasting. Um, today, because we're in a situation at the moment where the Bordeaux wine trade is trying to kick off its um, on premier campaign, which is where they sell wines that they haven't actually yet bottled um, from the 2019 vintage. Um, this is increasingly, this is rather difficult for them this year, more so than, than, than usual, in that um, normally what happens is that the trade and the critics will go to Bordeaux at the um, end of March, beginning of April, and they'll taste the wines, or they'll taste an assemblage of the wines that have been put together specially for them to try. Um, and obviously with the um, lockdown that went on in France and elsewhere in, in Europe due to COVID-19, that's not been able to happen. So um, Negociants and the Chateaus are trying some innovative, innovative ways of um, contacting the, their merchants and the um, critics who write up their wines. Um, so we thought we'd, um, we'd try a, a, a claret, a red Bordeaux that had already been bottled. So that's um, Chateau d'Armaillac there, that's the 2016 of this, so still a very young wine. Um, I, thought, I thought this would be a good wine to try because it's a classic Pauillac. Uh, Pauillac, uh, smaller um, Appalachian than most of the others on the um, left bank in, in Bordeaux. So, uh, classic Pauillac soils are stony, they're free draining, and uh, it's a great place for Cabernet Sauvignon to achieve good ripeness, um, but yet keep excellent balance of acidity. Um, the classic chateaus of um, Poyac would be something like Lafitte and Latour the, and Mouton, the first growths, or um, Pichon Baron and Pichon Comtesse, second growths. Um, Damayac is owned by the Rothschild family who own Mouton Rothschild. Um, Damayac itself is a fifth growth. Um, at stages of its life, it's been known as um, Mouton Baron Philippe, uh, but has now been renamed with its original name, uh, Damayac, which it, it held when it was classified fifth growth in 1855. So enough talk onto the wine and looking at it, it's it's got a fantastic colour, it's got a real depth. Um, if you look down through it, it's not quite opaque, but it's an almost sort of um, inky um, purple red. Um, and you can see it's you can see it sort of slightly colouring the glass as you give it a swirl. The aromas, uh, it's a young wine, the aromas are still uh, dominated by the um, cedary oak, so this will have spent a at least a year, probably longer, in um, 225 litre oak barrels, um, a large percentage of which were probably new, probably at least 50%. Um, the uh, blend here is, I believe it's 62% Cabernet Sauvignon with 28% of Merlot, and then there's 8% of Cabernet Franc, and a final 2% of Petit Verdot, just to, to beef it up there. Um, generally, Darmayac tends to be lean, elegant, fine, and very, um, black currenty in its no nature. Um, this is this was rated by one of the critics, Neil Martin, as one of the best examples of Darmayak he's ever tried. And I can see why he's saying that. Um, the aromas, as I say, they've got that cedriness from the barrel. You've got um, very well integrated black fruit, uh, mulberry sort of, um, dark plum, bullis, um, those sort of notes. And then just finishing almost with a sort of a cinnamon touch. When you taste the wine, again, those sort of, those um, same flavors coming through, but the, you start, it starts to be a little more cassis in the, the, the acidity on the finish, which gives it nice length. There's um, a real depth and texture to this wine. Um, as I say, often um, Darmayac is a fairly lean, sort of very Cabernet dominated style of wine. This this has more ripeness, which I think reflects the, the fairly warm vintage. Um, its depth, its length of flavour, and its excellent sort of velvety um, mouth coating tannic structure suggests that it's a wine that, that should last for at least 20 years. Uh, it's still very young now, beautifully integrated, but yeah, relatively drying they, um, without without being totally astringent. Um, yeah, really nice example of a Boyac. If anything, sort of atypically rich and ripe. Um, lovely long flavours still developing in the mouth. There's 
more of a sort of an earthiness as, as the wine finishes and that's those intense tannins coating the tongue so um, to anybody thinking of buying on Premier in 2019 all the best bye now <laughs>